Hey guys, welcome to the live. I'm having here the pleasure, the honor to talk with my very good friend, one of the one of the, my dearest friends, one of the, the best in the world. For those that don't know, this is Murillo Bustamante. There you go. I'm waiting to hear the claps right now. People are gonna be clapping at home, I know you. <laughs> guys, for those that don't know, Murillo is a world champion in jiu-jitsu. We grew up together, we can say that, in Brazil when we were kids. Um, but beyond anything else, Murillo was was an extremely important representative of jiu-jitsu against some challenge that happened in Brazil. That was it was the time of jiu-jitsu against Luta Livre. We're going to talk about this. I'm just trying to get a good explanation of who Murillo was, um, who Murillo is, right, and his background. Talk a little bit about his history. Murillo was a world champion in jiu-jitsu. Murillo was really the representative of jiu-jitsu against Luta Livre, who changed the course of the Vale Tudo in Brazil, you know, driving into the what is MMA today. This guy fought absolutely everywhere, including the best of the best will be from Pride Show at the peak, at the prime time with a Pride Show which is, was one of the most important events of MMA, or actually Vale Tudo in the world, and UFC. Murillo was the first Brazilian to win the middleweight division in UFC uh, since Zufa uh, took control. And, and this, is, this is such importance of this personality in Brazil and, and, and a buildup of what it is, the MMA story before. People have to understand before anything else, it was the Vale Tudo and transition to the no-holds bar. And now, as we see it, organized the sport as MMA. Murillo, man, it's an honor to have you here. I know that 100% you're, you know, you're here to support the, the first responders, the people there is in the front line of everything that's happened. This, uh, this collaboration with the Red Cross is extremely important to give the support and the, all the donations that's happening here right now, it's going straight to Red Cross, and, and we can guarantee that they're going to have a, a blast to have somebody like you involved. I always say that you are an extremely amazing representative of, of jiu-jitsu and MMA because beyond anything else, you are a martial artist. So as your brother, as your friend right now, as your anchor and a host, Thank you for being here at the Black Belt Jiu-Jitsu Live Marathon. I'm going to say Jiu-Jitsu, you know, the, mar the martial arts marathon. So thank you. Thank you, my friend Liborio, my brother, my brother for another mother. Uh, uh, I, feel, I feel very, you know, proud to, to, to listen what is said, you know, it's, uh, it means a lot coming from you, a legend in, 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 in mixed martial arts, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, uh, one of the best that I trained with, you know, uh, so pleasure to be here, uh, I honorable to, to, I feel honored to, to, to make part of this campaign, you know, congrats to Black Belt Magazine, it's amazing campaign to donate to okay. donate you know for the red cross so i'm very proud to make part of this this campaign so it's uh, super nice especially to be with you that's a big friend close friend of mine who grew up as you said we grew up together in brazil in the old times in, you know the before the the, the center of the world the jiu-jitsu center of the world was here de janeiro yep and at this time, the, the local tournaments was kind of a world tournaments. Didn't you know? Didn't exist the the, the international federation. Didn't exist the, the Brazilian federation. Uh, you know, so the local tournaments and here in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil was the best of the best jiu-jitsu plays in the world. All, all so, the guys from all the states, right, Marilu, was to come over here. Real, yeah, real they come. They come to fight in Rio, but the best fighters come, they was from here. They were from Rio, you know. So the best guy was living here and training here. Uh, all the best academies, you know. The, the, the jiu-jitsu wasn't spread yet around the world. So it's a different time. People, I believe people that, you know, 
uh, listen that cannot realize how was the old times. And you said about the, the Valitudo against Luta Liva, that it was a time of one of the biggest rivalry of, uh, you know, among disciplines, Jiu-Jitsu and Luta Liva in Brazil, actually was the last Real, challenge that we have for in Brazil. people that, that know, and people probably, the Jiu-Jitsu guys they are listening to right now, any grappler right now, kind of heard about this, that this, this confrontation between Jiu-Jitsu and Luta Liva, but... I think it's worth it for you to tell it when this started. We were there at the tournament, right? At the Copa Nostra. That's the name of the championships that were in it. And the Luta Livre guys came in. Just, just give your words there because I remember that you you are in the meeting. You were there when Marcel Berry was talking to the guys and, and, and you actually took ownership of all this and, and decided to, you know, to fight for for jiu-jitsu. Just tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, it, uh, the story happens, you know, uh, years ago, uh, kind of a disagreement between a member of a family, Gracie, and the guys from Luta Livre uh, in the 80s. And there was, a, there was a fight before my fight, before the, this challenge against Luta Livre, that fought a couple members of uh, Luta Livre and, and, and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, that fought Piduca, uh, Fernando Piduca against Marco Ruas, Marcelo Bering against uh, Flavio Molina, mm -hmm. uh, Eugênio Tadeu against uh, Renan Pitangui, and Inácio Aragão against Bruce Lúcio. So it was in 83 or 84, I believe. And uh, Inácio won, Marcelo won, Pinduca was a draw against Marco Ruas, uh, it was a good match, and where else? And, and won. Eugênio won, Eugênio Tadeu won uh, against uh, Renan Pintagui. And I was a, was a surfer, uh, you know, one of the best surfers in Brazil, he used to surf big waves, very known in Hawaii. Big rider, big rider, right? Big rider, he, he ride big, very respectful in Hawaii, you know. Uh, but he wasn't ready to fight anyway. He, he fought, but a very brave guy. He fought, he lost. But then, after that, the Luta Libre, that was a kind of uh, 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 discipline, for, you know, not small, but not no discipline in Brazil. The guys grill and feel confident to, to, to you know, to kind of hang out, mess around people from jiu-jitsu on the streets and, you know, what kind of streets problems happened. Uh, and certain time, there was more uh, a kind of challenges on the streets, like big names, like... Uh, but in the end, in 90, 91, uh, one of the members of our academy, it was Validi, that was a brown belt, he was a... a black belt at the time, but Carson push the students to challenge every time, you know, Carson like that. Remember, Carson always pushing, right. uh, pushing me, pushing you to, yep. to, to, to kind of go to the newspaper to challenge people, but you were, you were a different way of, you know, of, you were too low profile to kind of... I can never do kind this, of thing. I, I could never challenge anyone. It's like, it yeah, was not so it, it wasn't that. Is, is that, you know, coming from, from, from us. But anyway, but it made a challenge. And the guy was kind of expecting something. He was, you know, uh, wanting something like that. And they got, a, they got together, make a big group. And there was a tournament, like a, a, I was kind of a, a big tournament in Rio at the time. It's like a state championship, uh, right? It was yeah, a state, but maybe kind of a state Brazilian. It was, a, you know, yeah. didn't have a title, but it was a kind of a, a national. It was a big tournament. I wasn't fight, I don't remember why, but uh, I knew the guys, you know, kind of gossip around. We, we knew that they go uh, spread the word, that people spread the word that it was, the guy was, would go to the tournament to challenge, to accept the challenge. To accept the challenge. So that's accept the challenge. It's just good to know. So all this thing started with Valide when he came to the newspapers and, and, and challenged all the other martial arts, that's what happened. Yeah, but but it wasn't valid. It came from before the him, you know. The guy was already there. There was a kind of fight on the on the beach uh, uh, with Hickson against Hugo Duarte. Remember that? 
We actually moved so. over there. We at the Next. beach of the day. Yeah, I arrived after the fight. I, I was were, there at the day. I remember yeah. seeing it every day. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, I wasn't in a group of that, but I, I was at the beach. So, but some yeah. kind of, uh, you know, fights on the street and the guys, well, they were already there. It wasn't, it wasn't valid fault. And it wasn't, you know, he made a challenge. The guy was wanting, oh. wanting for a challenge. And they kind of grabbed this, like, you know. Opportunity. Kind of wanting very much. Opportunity, that's right. Yeah. And they went to the tournament, you know, and then they, they kind of, they, they were, they, they, they wasn't aggressive, you know, it was the limit. Almost happens a big fight, but thanks God it didn't happen. Uh, but they kind of, they went to the tournament, it was a kind of behavior, wasn't too cool. It wasn't, you know, it yeah. wasn't that nice. They kind of a little bit arrogant. Anyway, uh, when I knew that they're gonna go, they will go to the tournament. I, I, I knew that on, on Thursday night, and I spoke to Casson that if the guys go to the tournament next Sunday, I would I would like to fight to represent Jiu Jitsu because I was a black belt already competing tournaments, yep. you know. Uh, one of the guys that was, uh, you know, uh, the, you know, I think it was kind of a couple black belts at the time from Carson School that was competing on top. Uh, I was one of them, and, and I kind of put my name in line because I, I I wanted to represent the discipline. It wasn't because of money. It wasn't because yep. uh, because to be to get famous, famous. So it was just because of to represent Jiu Jitsu. And then it happens, man. It was crazy time, you know. Uh, uh, and then. We kind of could. Marcelo Bering was the guy that. Uh, Marcelo Bering was there. Marcelo Bering, together with Carson, they took the front off to 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 the line, and received, oh, really? you know. This is this is a good point there. That was at that point there, and actually was this big union of of all the schools. Like Marcelo came from a different background with a different lineage, right? Uh, Fabio Grugel was another one who came from a different lineage than, than us, than Carson Gracie. Because people that don't know right now, lineage in, in, in jiu-jitsu is a very important thing. They come from a certain yeah. group, right? I think, I think you should explain to people that what they see nowadays, that they think there is a big competition among, you know, among teams, yeah. is nothing compared at the time. The tournament was kind of a war. People didn't fight, but was kind of a rivalry. It was, you know, among Carson Grace Academy, Grace Maita, uh, Baja Gracie, and a couple more schools. But was kind of, you know, uh, it's it like a soccer. It's a soccer cheering, right? Yes. It crazy. Was soccer. Crazy. The yeah, passion, it, it, the, the, you know, the, the crazy things, you know, was uh, was uh, it was kind of it didn't happen that you train. With people from different academies, only if it was kind of uh, 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 the training, the, the, the sparring will be kind of a fight, like a schedule of training. But the, you're gonna you're gonna train with the guy like a fight. It wouldn't be like a, a, to have fun and make positions and stuff. Jiu Jitsu didn't happen at the time, you know. So, and then Marcelo was my friend, and he was a very veter veteran. He was. All the black belt than, than, than myself. For those that don't know, Marcelo Bering, right? Marcelo Bering is really one of the most permanent in a de in a decade of the '80s. Him, um, him, and and Castro Cardoso has a rivalry, but those that in a certain decades, in a certain age, there Marcelo was the representative of almost like the Gracie families, or at least so Marcelo was. Well, Marcelo was the best. Hickson Gracie student, student all it's times. Nice. Yep. Okay. All time. Marcelo all time. was the best. Marcelo was the sparring of Hickson Gracie. Oh, look at uh, that. When he was, you know, when he was in his time, he was, you know, the, the, the student of Hickson. He's, he's, he was the, the right, right arm of Hickson. So, yeah. That's and we got friendship. Thing. We're talking about Marcelo, Marcelo Berengi, you know, Marcelo Berengi. It, it, Marcelo Berenguer actually has this huge lineage 
because he was one of the first guys to move to Sao Paulo, and he really, he actually created um, a massive army of jiu-jitsu players. Let's say that Marcelo actually planned to see he, him and his family, right, Mar Amarillo? Uh, yeah, uh, Marcelo's father, Marcelo father is a master of jiu-jitsu, a uh, student of Helio uh, Gracie, Flavio, yep. Mr. Master, master Flavio, Flavio Gracie. Flavio Bering. Flavio Bering. Uh, he is, uh, I think, nine degree or eight degree. I think nine degree, right? Oh yeah, he's a red master. belt. He's a red belt. He's yeah. A red belt. Yeah. So, and Marcelo fought uh, uh, in '93. He was a brown belt after the the, the Valley Tour against Flavio Molina. Yep. That was a representative of Luta Livre and Taekwondo. And he won, and Hickson gave him a black belt. Straight after the the, the the fight, for that, yeah, and then I made a friendship with Marcelo since I was a blue belt. Marcelo was already a black belt. We got we got friends, you know, and, and uh, we became friends. And Marcelo always talked to me about the you know the Valley Two do that was because from you know from the the, the, the ring side. I was in the ring side at the time. I was uh, around eighteen years old. Uh, it was kind of you know different and a little bit scary for, for, for you know a teenager like you know but something that attracted me to 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 get involved because <laughs> you know it was a kind of a one more step yeah uh, but I was kind of care but myself I was talking that was you know I could because he knew he knew me I, I was competing I getting better uh, blue belt uh, purple belt brown belt I get back, you know my, my curriculum was very was very yeah. good at the time and I went out with Marcelo the night, the Thursday night, when I knew that uh, the guys would go to the tournament to accept the challenge. After I spoke to Castle, we went out and I, I told him he got proud. I said, man, he was so proud of me like a young brother, you know, something like that. And then he said, if you go, I go as well. And then the guy arrived at the tournament, and Marcelo was the first guy to, to oh, okay, you yes. know, step in to receive receive the guys. They were very polite and break the the, the kind of break the the the, yeah. the bad environment. You know, the the, the it's the funny, Marcelo. Mar Mar I don't want to I don't want to jump back again because I wanna I wanted to watch that match with you, and I know that we're going to be a little bit short in time. But there is one thing. Marcelo had a life, a bigger than life personality, man. You know, for those that are not listening to right now, uh, he unfortunately passed away, but he left a legacy of people and not just their, you know, not just their kids, but all the students that came from, from, from the Bering and Marcelo Bering's camp or in the highest level of competitors. But his personality, right, Maru, is one of the biggest yeah. things. This guy was yeah. loved by everyone. And his, and his son, his son is a uh, Kieran Gracie. He 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 got a son with Akila Gracie. His son is a cousin of Roger. Kieran is living with Roger in uh, teaching Roger Academy in, in, in England. I uh, he already competing in MMA, Jiu Jitsu MMA. So he's a big boy. His face, you know, is a, he's an amazing guy. Yeah. Anyway, what I want to 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 tell everybody that the first time that the people from different academies trained together was this time. Yep. The Valley Tour, people made the camp. So I brought Marcelo, Marcelo brought Fabio Gugel, and Fabio Gugel bring his teammates to train with us. So imagine a camp made by uh, Marcelo Bering, Fabio Gugel, uh, myself, uh, Ricardo Liborio, as, uh, you know, uh, Zé Mari Spani, you know, so good guys from Jiu-Jitsu training together at the same time. You know, Roberto Trave, Roberto Trave, Alain Bosch, uh, Castelo it. Branco, you know, so good guys, everybody. It's like kind of you make a camp with uh, training for four months together, like uh, Bochecha, yeah. Roger, like nowadays, you know, the, the Rodolfo Vieira, Leandro Lo, put these guys training together. Nowadays, you see what's going to happen. So it's... That it was who is who and you just at a time. You're right. Yes. Who is who and you just yeah. at a time. That was, that was a great analogy from there. Merlo, yeah. the importance is to 1991. It, it showed a lot of unity. 
for jujitsu. That was one of really, like you said, the first time it happened. Uh, I like to make an analogy of the moment that we're passing through right now because there's a lot going on, and and the sport itself, jujitsu, it has this. He needs jujitsu is down in the you know in a in a sense that professors, instructors, students, the whole entire community needs a lift up. And this is one of the reasons why we're doing all this, right? One of this, if you see the panel of people that are coming in tomorrow, they're all from different roots. Guys from ah, Gracie, from Alliance, from from Zenit, from, from Novo Neon, from Brazilian Top Team, from everywhere. This is for tomorrow, which is go to Jiu-Jitsu. Now, Murillo, in this importance of 1991, I even think, and I wanted to watch this match with you right now, for people to understand that 1991 was, in my opinion, the beginning of everything for jiu-jitsu. And after that, you see the UFC being formed in 1993. So let's, let's go watch a little bit of that. <clears throat> That's you so young. How old are you at the time? I was uh, 25th, I think so. You see, my face is still the same. I'm still good looking. <laughs> <laughs> and the hairline, the Didn't hairline is a little bit, just the a little white. bit forward in this one. Just the white hair. Murillo, <laughs> at least you got the big shorts there, huh? You buy, you got the sunga. Oh yeah, yeah. I got there. a small there short. Go. Just got the two finger shorts that Marcelo Mendes is wearing. Is it something? Oh that, man, yeah. embarrassing. It's no days. <laughs> there you go. Old school double, I got in the under over the 50 50. Yeah. And you guys have to realize that, guys, is the ropes outside. This is such an old school. This is a this is a boxing ring. There was there was no yeah, cage, the the, there's no octagon. Yeah, yeah. Right? And the ring was really old, <laughs> really old, yep. old ring. Look at this. That, that, we, remember, we're drilling a lot of this, Muriel. The kick yes. on a kneecap. Yeah. Stand up again. It's true. You had. Got from there. Oh, yeah. that was a good matching. The perfect time for the kick. You got yeah, him. Is, Marcelo was a, a black belt in you know? Taekwondo as well. Black go from belt in Luta <clears throat> really? Oh, you went to the mount from there. Oh, look yeah. at this. I remember this. Everybody yeah, was going almost. crazy at the time. Everybody screaming. That everything was allowed. You see that there's no gloves, no nothing. Um, well, yeah. Bearing I don't know. Can you kick in the head on the floor? You you may could, right? No, I don't think so. Uh, I think he wasn't allowed to kick the head if the opponent was on the ground. But I think look at this, guys. In the, in the middle of points. the they're in the middle of the ring right there. Good knee. Yeah, good, knee. good knee. Under over one more knee. Yeah. You try to reach the single leg, go back to stand up. I'm not a takedown. I stuffed it. What did you do? Oh, uh, you have a pick out under, and you take him down. That was beautiful. I didn't. I didn't remember yeah. that. And you're pushing in to go to mount. Man, this is short shorts, huh? Oh, you could you could headbutt too, right? Eh? Really? <laughs> <laughs> I just saw that. Almost. <laughs> Almost. Too. But I think about. I realized that my head was just to think, you know. Oh my goodness! Uh... I look at everybody there. You know, uh, uh, people crazy around the, the, the jumping oh, around the ring, man. Look at that. Underground. This is crazy because I think 90% of these people there are jujitsu guys. 10% are a little different. Uh, yeah, right? kind of 80, 80 to 90%, uh, for sure. This. You had always this really good, you know, just move out, you just step out of the punch and you go back there with the jab. Yeah, the right. I, I, I had a good, some of my strongest points is the distance, yep. you know, for strike a game. Look I at was that. kind of, uh, you know, That's restarting the box. Yeah, you just move it out, you come back with the jab. Yeah. And the kick. His nose is bleeding at the time. Look at that. Yeah, he, he start to, I start to push him. Me. Push the fight. Under over. Well, <laughs> the referee was there too. Give us a push, and that's the point. There, that's the point that he moves. He dives out of the out of the ring. 
It yeah. moves out so quick, man. I'm not my gosh. It seems like he's paying the bills. If somebody was charging him for something. He was in there a bad go. situation there, man. Who was the, it was Joel Bato by Hector? Yeah, uh, the referee was, uh, the, the, yeah, that's what I want to say. Referee is the master, the legend uh, yep. of uh, the uh, legend. Jiu Jitsu, yep. João Alberto Barreto, black, uh, red belt, nine degree. Look at that. The best. Everybody there. I was there in your times. corner. I was there in your corner, too. Who? Me? Yes, you were there. I was there. My first fight. I yeah, was there. You were. You were. <laughs> so young. Yeah. No, that. At this point right now, I don't think he wants anything with you anymore. It was the jab, look at it. Oh, yeah. single leg. You got a good single leg there. Oh, yeah. hold the ropes. No. Double unders. Now he's going to get out of there like a Formula One racer. Look at that. Let's get out of there. Let's go back in. Is yeah, he coming back in? Fight. Yeah. At this point right yeah, now, just guys, imagine the guys on the back there saying, you got to go back. You got to go back. Yeah, yeah, they push him. Away. You see, uh, I could box at the time. It was my first time. I could box, but my guard was so low. My arm was so heavy, you know. <laughs> and that was it. You know, yeah. this is Merlo. This is what's very important. To do. Another thing. This is what's air yeah. to the biggest TV channel. And a lot, of, a, a lot of young fellows that had uh, became professionals and, you know, yeah. like uh, Victor Shaolin and, you know, a lot of guys out there, the, guy who, the guys that were kids, you know, making part of the, 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 the this big party of jiu-jitsu there was so cool. Everybody yeah, it was is. so, oh, so together. One, one thing we have to say, Murillo, after this, you said it. It wasn't just jujitsu. I think it, MMA, not MMA, Vale Tudo was created in Brazil. That influenced a lot of people, not just you, but the whole Carson team started changing, you know, the gears. It started training only for for MMA, right? And it was, I, I like yeah, to MMA was Vale Tudo. Out. It was it was nine one, but now you train a lot of uh, uh, jujitsu. Didn't have too much value to the fights at the time, but you kind of training more than before because Carson always pushes to training kind of uh, uh, slapping, you know, like using the, the, the training uh, uh, kind of uh, MMA with no gloves. Yeah, but you know what makes it change? You know, There's two changes fun. there. We, two we did that before. Go to the beach. Remember exactly. You go there every Saturday. We go there. We go to working with the slaps and Good go morning. to the beach after that. Yep. Yeah. But Merlo, there's one thing. There's two things I think make difference a lot in 1991. First of all, Carson was being the coach with everybody, so we had the chance to see Carson really coaching, right? Yeah. No? Oh man, this this one. Uh, that was amazing. One time. of the most important things that we had, you know, on our side. So. Two, two important things, the most important, Carson coaching every day, the team, you know, the guys like Fabio Gugel, Marcelo Berg, yep. yeah, many other guys got advantage, you know, because we were students of him, but they, are, they aren't. So, you know, it was good for them, very good for them. And the second, the second was uh, that Marcelo was my friend in, in, inside the team, and he was... Had, he had more experience of Valetuda than myself, and he helped me a lot so, as well, give me tips and advice. But the, the most important is and give directions, you know. But there was, people started training from, from, from at night to at noon. There's another thing that it would make a huge difference because the noon training kind of took away from a lot of those guys that were – not professionals or not too deep into the to the sport 100 percent you know what i'm saying guys like guys that we grow up with like yeah. um, the guy that the professional they have to work during the day so the the lunch time like 11 to to, to at noon to 12 yeah. we were there training until one o'clock 1 p.m but we used to have a great team at night training 
You know, people used to go, guys like Braulio, Ricardo Juca, Marcel Duque Estrada, Buchaú, Kaique, and, and, and Zé Eduardo. Um, there, there are so many guys there that used to train at night. And now at noon, a lot of those guys uh, are, uh, they, they, they can go at noon and separate. We're working. The guys were no, working. We're working. Oh. Yep. And, and it separate the guys. But that was really the beginning of everything that prepared the Carson Gracie team to train more no gi. And you guys, actually, when I say you guys, really, I was working at the bank. I could not do anything, but you guys done it. But you, um, Alan Goyes, and after that came this whole entire generation of guys that started fighting, fighting Valetudo, Carlon Barreto, Maris yes. Perry. Now, and all those guys and people that already used to not train it only with the gi. Yeah. Now you're training with no gi more often because of the Valetudo of 1991. You know? Yes. Um, hold on for a second. Hold up. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was going to try to get, hold on for a second. Um, somebody sent me taxes here at the same time. Marilo, a couple things there from there. Talk a little bit about this transition. What is the next step from there? I, we know that from there is a very important fight in your career that you decided to fight a much bigger opponent, a, a very accomplished wrestler, somebody who was really, man, we're, we're we, your friends, knowing the backstage of everything. Man, I was super worried. I was really worried about Tom Erickson's fight because, because the guy was a monster. There was no even there was nobody to train with to to actually to to have a, a glimpse of idea of how to fight a guy like that. You know, even Carlo Barreto. Carlo Barreto was a slim compared with Tom Erickson. Was you know to 300 pounds, seven feet tall, almost seven feet tall. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's a um, well, anyway, he was, he was a monster and you decided to go, what was in your mind? What's your mindset for that? What do you, what is in that for you? All those things here. You know, we knew that wasn't just because of the money, you know? Uh, man, you see, it happens. Uh, so when the Valley Tudo happens, 91 was a challenge between disciplines. And I got the fight because uh, because of jiu-jitsu. I didn't, you know, want to, it wasn't to, to make money. I didn't have money involved. We almost make the fight inside the academy. So and then it was 91. They didn't have a big shows around. In 93, they create UFC, 1993. And then the market, you know, grew a little bit. And then they create pride in Japan. So then the market kind of start to move. And then 95, I supposed to fight one of the guys from Luta Livre didn't, that didn't fight in 91 because his open, o, opponents got sick. Who is this? About Hugo Duarte. Hugo Duarte. Oh. Uh, Hugo Duarte was supposed to fight Amorim Vitech or Marcelo yeah. Berenke. Both guys got sick, got, got an injury. So... And then I supposed to fight, and then I restart the training. I, 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 I we, we, we compete the, the 92, the Brazil, the Nationals, in 94, in 90, 95, nah, 95, I training for, to fight Udo Archie. But, and then I bring a couple of guys to train with me, like uh, Carlos Barreto, he was my student. I bring him to, to train with me and, and you know, uh, Crazy, Crazy Chavez and uh, Maris Perry with the butt. Yep. Uh, I trained him for his first, fi his first fight. And, but the fight didn't happen. And I got an invitation to fight in Japan. And I couldn't go because I had a fight in Brazil. And I put my student to go. It was Carlo Barreto. Carlo Barreto yep. with me. But my fight didn't happen. So then the same group that invited me to go to Japan invited me to fight in Brazil, 96. And then I re returned to, 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 to the rings. And then I fought and I won. And then after that, one of my friend, biggest friends that, that live in the US was involved in the organization of a, a tournament and a, and a show, Mix of Martial Arts, Martial Arts Reality Super Fighter. 
There's a couple of fights against Russians, uh, Enzo fought Taktarov, and more couple of super fights okay. in the tournament with eight guys fighting. And Sergio, my friend, my, 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 my manager at the time, he wanted to put him to fight a, a, a super fight against a Russian guy. And put my student, uh, Carlão, to fight the tournament against that the Tom will, Axon will, will be fighting. But we knew that Tom Axon was a super good athlete, you know, coming from the qualifier of Olymp Olympic Games that he lost. Yeah. Bongarten, that was a guy that the two times gold medal medalist and one time silver medalist in the Olympic Games. So the guys, you know, was one of the best huge, ever. Huge and one yeah. of the best ever, but uh, Tom Erickson was close of him there competing since, you know. And I knew the story of Tom Erickson, but and I couldn't put my, 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 my student to fight in, in a harder, you know, situation than myself. And then I put my Carlon to fight in, in the super fight and I picked the fight, the tournament against that I, I Everybody knew or expect that the final will be me and against our ex. It did happen. And so my mind was kind of ready for the challenge. I want to test myself. I knew that it would be hard, yep. you know, a uh, hard tournament, a hard fight, because if we meet, we're going to meet the third fight of the night, and it happens. You know, he won two fights, I won two fights, and the third, the third fight will be against each other. And the fight supposed to be 30 minutes, but in the end was 40 minutes because they it was a kind of a mental challenge for me as well because after 10 Not minutes, just for I, you, man. I gotta tell you this. Only for you, nothing. It's for us. I remember I remember, I think I, I don't know if we were living together. By the way, for people who don't know, me and Marilla were roommates. Yeah, we were living together, yeah. We were living together, man. I'll tell you this. I was I'm sorry to say that, but I was I was scared for you, for the size of the guy, for the accomplishments, for the just mostly because he was a beast. This guy was so big, you know. And you were what, man? You were 180 pounds, 185 no, I was, pounds. I was no, I was 200 pounds. 200 pounds. 200 okay, pounds. that was 90 kilos, a little bit less than 200. But that was that was a 300 pound guy against the 200 yeah. pound guy. It was really, yeah. it was something really, really, and that was at the time too. Um, but the, the thing that you came from us was like, Mark Coleman and Mark Herr were doing so well. They're fighting. They were, they were the beasts. There was, it was hammer time, right at the time. Yeah, after the and qualifying, after the qualifying, the guys that lost the qualifying for the Leap Games, they went, they, they got in the the the, the Valley Tour time. It was Mark Coleman went to UFC. Mark Kerr started to fight. Kevin Hunderman, if I, you know, as well. And Don Henderson Marilo, as well. Listen, Marilo, uh, there is one thing that happens. Um, we decided to invite somebody over here tonight. Somebody who really actually have a beautiful story to tell you about 1991 and the whole entire transformation of, of jiu-jitsu into volley tudo and to mma i want to i want you to actually i want to renato laranja por favor veica uh, uh, i i am right. here right. look at that beautiful face over there uh busta march e aí fera and can, can you guys just speak? Can you guys speak English for the crowd? If you, if it's, oh, oh, if you okay. can, that's no problem. Okay. My, my my English is flawless. Um, uh, but Bosamanch, can you minimize your face in in there? <laughs> <laughs> for some reason, my screen, I can only see one. You two, it's so big. You try to say, you try to say that he's he's got the soul. Uh, he's casca grossa, but he's also casca, you know. Grossona. Yeah. <laughs> Carayu. Nato. Uh, the last time we uh, speak, the last time we spoke, you were actually telling me the story about how you come to be Renato Laranja. How uh, did that happen? Well, this is a story that says all this shiny. Um, it's not unlike the story of um, Jesus uh, Christ. 
um, or maybe even uh, Clark Kent and Superman. Um, not unlike how they was found him in the cornfield and was, you know, brought him out there to the public. Um, if you remember correct, uh, at Booster Munch, you know, at, at that time I was I was sleeping in the favela um, on the concrete, um, and it was snowing, if I remember correct, and I was cold. And uh, Booster Munch was, saw me there, and by the grace of my God, he put a gee chop onto me and was collect me and was brought me um, to his house. And um, I think that's where we were. Uh, we met for the first time, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, we lived together, together at the time. We lived together yeah. at the time. We were roommates yeah. at the time. Yeah, which was, you know, unfortunate for, for me because not as much room and not as much food, but it was better than what I had. Which was nothing. I had nothing. Nothing. So even to yes. live in a crowded place with, you know, a couple of young guys who is fighters and stuff and uh, with the hand warm and uh, the staff infection stuff like that, it was still better than what I had going on there. Yeah, you could you could you couldn't say at the time that uh, the kid that you 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 rescued from the street would became like uh, twenty seven times world champion jiu jitsu. So something that you know, I, I can only be imagine part of a history. I, I can only imagine for so, you what it feel like. You know, it's like uh, for Benjamin Franklin yeah. to discover I'm the feel, electricity. I feel blessed. Yeah, you are blessed. You are, it uh, was a blessed to, event. You know, and to help yeah. some way and accomplish. That's yeah, I mean, we made history. That's for us here right now, guys. For you guys are watching this right now. There's history in making. There's a well, union, but beyond anything else, there's two guys that wrote the history of, of the sport jiu-jitsu into MMA, right? Yeah. I gotta yeah. tell, I gotta be honest with you. I saw your I saw your fight against uh, Eddie Bravo, uh, and I'm shocked yeah. how easily you 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 just took him down. You just you just made him pass out. Just I don't know. I don't know. This is something I really don't know. I, I didn't know what to say. Well, you you wearing a shirt that says Black Belt on here, you know, and we on here, and it, it's it's fitting that you tell that story because a Black Belt is not just a Black Belt, you know. It, there's levels to this thing, you know, and you know Eddie Bravo was found out that there's a Black Belt, and then there's it, you know, something. There's a difference it, there. Above, right? Yeah. 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 And that, you know, it was very impressive. I appreciate that. You know, it was very easy for me. I, I, I feel almost guilty to, to take so much credit for something that was, I sometimes forgot that it was, it happened. You, because it was just, for me, it's like something happened every day. For everybody else, it's a big deal. But for me, it's like, you know. You got a gift, uh, so what to say, right? You got a well, gift, that, my, so what you, you got a gift, right? Uh, you know, I, I can't take credit for, for, for me. I, I can't take credit for that. It's my God. It's like people look at me and they say, Hanato Laranja, you, you know, your, your eyes, you know, your baby brown, your, your, your skin, Egyptian cinnamon, your, your body is perfect and stuff. I say, no, it's not. <laughs> they say, how you can have that? How I can have that? I said, no, it, I'm not going to take credit for that. It's my God it, was gave to me it, that. It's a blessing, right? So it's not for everybody. You, you, you no. build that for to, to a, lot of, a lot of sweat, right? Yeah, the the I I I put in the work, um, and the time, you know. And I mean, look, how did you come up to to move to United States? How or when? Oh God, are you? It was the it was the mid ninety. You know, um, as you know, I got too big. Um, it's similar to what happened to to um, to David Chappelle. You know, the the black guy uh, comedian. He yeah. was um. You know, it's like it was too much. I had, you know, I was distracted from Valley Chudo and, and Jiu Jitsu. And I'm doing the singing, the albums, the, the TV shows. I have a cereal. I have a clothing line. I have the women, the, the baby mamas, the child support. I have all this stuff, the jealousy, the envy. Um, and I feel that, um, you know, at a certain point, I was just distance myself. You know, I, I built a cabin on the Amazon, and, and I just kind of went off the grid for a while. 
And then, um, you know, while I was out there having some time to think and to, to discover, to rediscover myself, I look on the satellite TV and I see the UFC. You know, the UFC start to, to blow up. I see everybody in pride. I see all these guys starting to make money from what your uncle Hanach built. And they're trying to rewrite history now. And they and you can find a lot of the, the young guys now, they don't even know who is your uncle Hanach. Um, and it, it's, it's up to guys like us to not legend, let the legend to die and to let people to know the real history from that. There's Elvis Presley, but who came before Elvis Presley? There was Chuck Berry. Um, there was, uh, you know, it, it, you, you have to go to the source, the hoots. You understand? I got so, that stuff, and I, I don't know if I'm sorry to interrupt you on this, but I'm sorry. I, I, heard, I wanted Murillo to say that, but I know Murillo as, as a UFC world champion, like he was. Yeah. He yeah. was inspired by you. And I remember well, that. It's, I don't know. I, I, if it, I, I, the time of recognition is now. Uh, man, I can't. Say, you know, I can say I'm, I'm a world champion Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and I'm world champion uh, UFC. But on the side of these guys, this guy, like you know, I feel small, man. I feel really, really short. This guy is, is something else. It's, you know, 27 times world champion. You know, so, you know when I hear that, I this is the guy. I can't agree with you more when I hear that. And and it's just it's just um, to hear you say that is validated. I, I must be humble, you know. I must be humble. I appreciate that. Uh, one, you know, one hit we're trying to accomplish here, uh, something also in this life, you know. And we need your help too, you know. Morello, Morello was the first Brazilian to win the middle wage championship of UFC when yeah. Zufa took in and created the weight division, weight categories. So Murillo was yeah. the first person to do that. And yeah. until now, Murillo is still not in a UFC Hall of Fame. And this, I is, um, this is what I mean. They're trying to hide history. They're trying to erase what we've achieved. Um, I, I, imagine if, if they can do that to uh, Murillo, what they've did to me. Um, if they can erase my teacher, they can imagine what they're gonna do to the student, you know? And um, I'm not gonna sit by and let, let it that you have. Not on my watch. But first, no, so we need, I'm gonna- We need your help. Here's we what's need gonna your help. help. I got an idea. Huh. First, we're, listening. we're gonna let everybody to know about my, my accomplishment, and we're gonna get everybody to understand that one. And then once I'm in there, then I'm gonna brought you guys in. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. So I think maybe we gotta do it that way because I'm still, you know, I'm out there. I'm, I'm still doing a lot of stuff here. A lot of, you know, I don't want you guys to waste your energy on that one. I don't know, and I don't think Murillo has. He, he doesn't yeah. have anything to do with Murillo directly. I don't know if it's something as a spin off on this, and it's spill yeah. on Murillo, but but. Don't you think if Vini has something to do with this? I mean, at least in your case, what well, you have to I'll, tell you, I'll tell you this. It's a, it's a very shame that you have a person who is an obese um, crayon like uh, Vini Magalesh on all these organizations. He's always get a fight. He lost 10 fights the UFC. Then they gave to him for, uh, striking for us. Then he lost that one they gave to him. World Series to fighting. Then they give to him PFL. Then they give him Vin Magalesh one in Russia. How many time? How many organizations they're gonna give this guy a chance? But your uncle Hanach will have a better hacker than that guy, and who is, uh, you know, probably a legend of sport. Nothing. I can't yeah. get a fight. It's called Maybe Black Ball, can or African American ball. They call. I mean, Murillo can help you in a certain way. Oh, yeah. Guys, sure. listen. Listen, we're, we're really, it's really now in, in a serious case, Renato, we need you actually to your support. And then everybody who's watching this right now, you know, Murillo is a dear friend. And I know this person you know, from, 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 from since we were kids, let's put it this way. But doesn't really make sense to me and to, to the vast majority of Brazilian guys to, 
to not have Murillo Bocinanti as a UFC Hall of Fame for everything he had done it for the for the sport of Valetudo, for the sport of Honojo's Bar, for for the MMA itself, and he's just really he, he's just really bright the whole entire path because it is not just into the champion. It's not just the belts. It's not just the medals. It's really about the character of the person that makes the yeah. whole difference, you know? And Murillo is a, is a big example for all of us. Um, I couldn't say it better myself, my brother. And uh, any, anything you need from me to, 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 to get that word out there and, and help the campaign, you got my support anytime. So whoever is watching this right now, guys, if you can actually hashtag Busta UFC Hall of Fame, and you just make this thing happen because it's 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 pity to see that there are so many guys there that may um, I'm not saying may not deserve. I don't even want to get into the credit, but somebody who is really so important to the history of the sport and not be in the UFC Hall of Fame for maybe politics or for maybe uh, be forgot you know be forgotten. I don't know exactly what it is, but um, I, I think I think also it's a function of of a lot of you know a lot of people i think they 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 just think from a marketing standpoint they think well you know the the ufc didn't blow up yet when he was fighting so these young guys you know the, the the casual fan they don't know but they need to this is why we need them to know you know so yes. it's not just yes. about business it's about his fact and another thing too one of the main reasons that you're here not to it is to yeah. actually for marilla to tell the world how important you are for Brazil wow. and jiu-jitsu, you know? Uh, so, and, and this talking, guys, I'm going to let Murillo say the goodbyes. I want to say Renato also. Be thankful for, for all you guys being here and helping this cause, you know, jokes apart and everything else. We're doing a really good deed and yeah. helping all the, you know, the, the head cross, the red cross and, and everybody who is in the front front of this coronavirus thing. So yeah, we, we're gonna help the head cross and you can donate to my child support fund too, if, if you so inclined. I mean, um, but also take a second to look the surroundings behind me. Uh, I mean, look what I've been able to build from this squad. So I can't complain too much, you know, Hall of Fame or not. Is it, the, is that I your mean, house? <laughs> Look the surroundings. Not too shabby. Oh, man. I thought it was a museum. So huge. Well, Congratulations. Yeah. Wow, you well, deserve you're that. You're welcome. You can take a look at I that. Actually, you thought it was a restaurant. Oh, you thought God. it was a restaurant or a restaurant? I thought it was, a, you know, as a museum, something like that. No, Crazy. this is just, this is somewhere where I can came, and you can't see right now, but there's a fireplace over there, and I can came and some entertain some female, and you know, to, uh, you know, do some, they, we, we do a little bit with a Ouija board or a tarot cards and stuff, and these women can heed my farch, or they can give me some deep tissue massage, half Swedish, half chai body work. All right. <laughs> you make sure you prepare for more child support? No, no. Well, look, um, I, I, how, many kids, my, how many kids? How many kids? You know, I, I, I lose track of that one. Um, but I'll tell you this, um, you know, my God brought me to this earth, okay? He did his job now, okay? He gave to me life. And then now it's my turn to, to make something of my life. So it's kind of like that, you know, I give the greatest gift of all, the gift of life. Um, but you had to let me do my thing now and let me to enjoy my life too. And, and you know what? My kids is free to enjoy their life too. I don't in, in, infringe on that on that one. Barillo, any, well any best words? We have a one minute to get out of here. Huh? Any so, final thoughts? Uh, uh, um, so first of all, I'd like to congrats one more time to the uh, Black Belt Magazine for the amazing, you know, achievement for the donation for the Red Cross. I'm very proud to make part of this campaign. Uh, I'm proud to be here with you, my big friend. Thank you for your words about myself. Make myself shy, you know. Uh, thank you to be, you know, thank to bring Renato to meet me here. Uh, make me a very emotional time, you know. Not everybody I meet. It wasn't easy, you know? but I made time. Yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, you know, meet someone like him that 
almost 30 times world champion, you know, and a legendary guy from Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So I feel uh, very humble. Thank you. Thank you for coming, Renato. You're, you're welcome. I, 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 I couldn't deprive you guys of this, you know, and I, I, I wanted to make sure I get, get to try to, you know, you, you had some fall on hard time lately and maybe to give you a treat, you know, you deserve that one. No, I, I personally appreciate, and I personally feel very honored to, to have you both here. The two are one of the biggest heroes and, and inspirations for, for every word to the whole entire community. I appreciate you guys. Um, we're, I think we're done right now, guys, really. But beyond anything else, don't forget, let's keep this campaign about Murillo Bustamante in the UFC Hall of Fame. I think as everybody you know, has to really jump in an opportunity to make make uh, justice, you know, make this guy win the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Renato, I'm, I'm all obrigado. In. Obrigado, muito obrigado mesmo. Vamos falar um pouco de português aqui agora, um pouco mais rápido. Pode ter certeza que isso... Tá bom? Ok? Valeu, fera. Valeu. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.